Uh, let's get into some climate change news. Some, oh, geez, did you have to do that? Hold on, we don't have to watch this. Or you don't have to watch this. Skip this. Okay, here we go. Uh, CBS News, this is from today. Apple fire in California spreads to over 20,000 acres. A massive wildfire burning in Riverside and San Bernardino counties. Um, has scorched over 20,000 acres and was at 5% containment Sunday night. According to the California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection, the Apple Fire, which is believed to have started as three separate blazes, broke out Friday afternoon and continues to burn three days later. Flames roared overnight into the hillside and into the communities of Cherry Valley. <clears throat> Banning and into the San Bernardino National Forest, the fire burned north of us for quite some time, and eventually it worked its way over here, one local resident told CBS Los Angeles. But as the fire started making its way down uh, Mia's Canyon, the man feared for his neighbor's ranch across the way. There are fire trucks. There, there is a fire truck sitting among the trees over there next to the home, he said. Cal Fire has had engines placed in every neighborhood, <clears throat> as more than 1,300 firefighters stood guard, saving hundreds of homes this weekend. And the air attack gave the Apple Fire a one-two punch, pushing it farther into the San Bernardino National Forest and away from the communities below. The firefighters did a fabulous job keeping everything under control. They were on it right away, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Governor Newsom announced the state got a FEMA grant to help pay for the ongoing firefighting efforts. About 8,000 people have been evacuated since the fire broke out. <clears throat> okay. Uh, moving on. Uh, floods continue in southern and central China and north-facing north facing droughts. Combined with locusts is furthering the risk of food shortages. Many areas currently hit by... Floods and droughts are among China's top regions for growing grains. Climate chaos. Um, that is happening. Just giving you a quick blurb. and Because I want to get into this <coughs> article here from Grist. The curse of both sideism. How Climate Denial Skewed Media Coverage for 30 Years. It's from July 28th, 2020. Ever wonder why Americans have been so slow to support climate action? A new study lays some of the blame on media bias for 30 years. Three of the country's most influential, influential sources of news gave too much credence to arguments that the world shouldn't take decisive action to mitigate climate change. Opponents of climate action have been given an outsized opportunity to sway this debate, said Rachel Wetz, the author of the study. Her results were published uh, Monday in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Wetz analyzed 1,768 press releases from business, government, and social advocacy organizations from 1985 to 2013, categorizing them by their stance on climate action. She then ran the press releases through plagiarism detection software to see how often they featured, they were featured in the country's largest circulation newspapers, the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, and USA Today. <clears throat> she found that even though 10% of the press releases contained messaging against climate action, arguments like it would be too expensive to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, 14% of them wound up in print. By contrast, the more prevalent press releases arguing for personal, corporate, or political action to tackle climate change were only covered 7% of the time. And the least covered press releases came from groups with the most expertise on science and technology, such as the American Academy of Arts and Sciences and IBM. Edward Mailbach, <clears throat> director of the George Mason University Center for Climate Change Communications, called these conclusions unsettling. Rather than marginalize self-interested voices and give prominence to expert voices, uh, these papers did just the opposite, he said. How to explain the results? Wet said one reason for the imbalance might be tied to journalistic norms of objectivity, which reporters and editors 
often interprets as a need to give at least two sides to every story, no matter the science. She called this false balance because it can put unsubstantiated opinions on the same footing as well-established facts. In the case of climate change, she said that the practice <coughs> excuse me, has lent legitimacy to those who deny climate change, leading readers to believe that denial is more than a fringe stance. Previous research has suggested that this practice, also known as both sidism, began to decline in the mid 2000s, but Wett's analysis found no statistically significant change in coverage over the 30 year period of the study. She also said that the trend couldn't be explained by excessive coverage of anti climate press releases in the business friendly Wall Street Journal. <clears throat> Claims that steps to curb carbon emissions would be too costly or undermine U.S. energy independence, for instance, also found favor in the liberal-leaning New York Times. As climate denial falls out of fashion, falls out of fashion. <laughs> it's just not fashionable anymore, guys. What's been called climate delay has taken some of its space, yes. Uh, or what I like to call soft denialism, as in it's not that bad, it's not happening that fast. Um... You know, we can take these little tiny, small incremental steps and we're fine. Everything's fine, guys. We're on the right track. That's on some levels denialism of the reality of the consequences of the situation. This is when people acknowledge the reality of climate change but seek to put off large-scale efforts to address it, sometimes redirecting responsibility for the climate crisis to consumers and emphasizing the downsides of urgent action. What's scanned press releases for both climate denial and delay. Anything that argued against climate action, regardless of whether they accepted the science. Maybe people are covering climate deniers somewhat less, what says, said, but then they're substituting in other, uh, in other conservative voices instead. They're talking about people who are opposed to climate action for some other reason besides denying the science. <clears throat> Jennifer Marlin, a senior researcher at the, and this is this is I, this is kind of the new uh, tack I think that people are going to start seeing is that yes you you know of course climate change is real but we're not going to do anything about it or we can't do anything about it or um, or we don't really need to you know go crazy on it I mean you know we're we're fine we're doing okay. Jennifer Marlin, a senior researcher at the Yale Program on Climate Change Communication, acknowledged that media environment has changed since the mid to 2010s. The New York Times in particular has ramped up its climate coverage, but she suspects that <clears throat> false balance continues to influence the national conversation. For instance, newspapers might be better at contextualizing opponents of climate action, explaining that their views are outside the mainstream, <clears throat> excuse me, but those arguments are still out there and are very much at play. Wet's called on researchers to investigate the effects of media skew on public policy, the messages amplified by the media can dampen political will to act on climate change, she said in a statement, with potentially serious consequences for how we as a society address or fail to address this issue. Absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me. Absolutely. Well, listen, thank you very much. My buttons like to just go out whenever they feel like it. Um, <clears throat> what I was trying to say is they want, they, they want to acknowledge that climate change is a thing, but they don't want to acknowledge that we have to do anything about it. And they want to make sure that anything that is done about it is, um, is good for jobs or good for green growth or good for the economy, right? They, they are completely enmeshed and mired in the corporate state. They're, they're, obviously, all of them are owned by corporations, and all those corporations exist – or continue to go forward based on our economic model of growth, right? So any realistic coverage of climate change is going to possibly inspire the idea in people's minds that maybe growth isn't a good thing, or maybe we shouldn't buy all these things, or maybe consumerism isn't a good thing for, for us. Maybe capitalism isn't a good thing. Hey, guys, remember to like, share, and subscribe, and you can support the channel. The link's below, uh, PayPal, Patreon, Square. Uh, also, if you'd like to watch the live streams, you can watch the live streams on my Patreon channel. You can subscribe for as little as a dollar. Um, so hopefully I will see you over there, and thanks so much.